And we're back. So we're, we left off in the academic history section. Um, if you didn't get to watch the first video and you still need help on the first part of the application, I would go back um, to part one of this UC tutorial video. Um, so we left off on the college information section. So if you took a college class while in high school, um, so that's a dual enrollment class or a class um, you know, on Gross Monarch Quimeca's campus or another community college, that's where you're going to put this information in. So you don't want to put any college level classes in your ninth through 12th high school class section. Okay, so um, if you took a class at Grossmont um, in dual enrollment classes, you're going to add Grossmont Community College. You can just search for that and it should pop up. And then it asks you, when did you attend this college? So this means the first semester, so from the first semester you started taking college classes, when was that? So you can find, I suggest before you start filling all this out, you can try to do it by memory, which I'm sure you can, uh, but just to make sure it's fully, fully correct, you want to open up a new tab, go to grossmont.edu, and then you're gonna go to self-service, log in, and in the academic section, there's a section to be able to um, download your unofficial transcript. You're gonna have to do this anyway when you turn this in to get it checked by us. Um, so just make sure that you download that and then you can see it says what your first semester was. Um, so say my first semester was, you know, fall of 2022. So I would do um, August, that's when we started, and then 2022 and say I'm taking um, a college class next semester. Say I'm taking poli sign next semester as a college class. I would go all the way till June 2024. So it's basically just asking, you know, what is the range of dates that you took these classes? And now it's going to say, all right, when did you, um, in what grades, what high school grades did you take college courses? So I'm going to do 10th grade because fall 2022 is 10th grade, right? Yeah, 21 to 22. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, and now I'm going to do, I did fall of 2022. Um, and then in, I'm going to do senior year and taking it in the spring. Okay, these winter courses, um, a lot of students don't take winter courses. So I would just stick with fall, spring and summer. Winter course is like a three week, really short, um, accelerated course that not a lot of students take because we don't really recommend that course. And then uh, Grossmont specifically is A through F. Another good reason to print out your transcript is sometimes um, some of the classes offered are through Quimaca. Um, so you want to make sure that if you have a Quimaca class, you add Quimaca as a separate college. They are partnered, but um, they are separate. Also, if you've taken Education 100, that's actually not going to go in this section because it's only a two unit class and it's with Southwestern. So if you took a class like Education 200, you would add Southwestern as a college and add Education 200. Save and continue. All right. So now it should look like this. Uh, make sure that you double check your dates specifically. So say I only took a class at Grossmont, I'll just click I finished adding colleges. All right. So now you are going to be able to enter the courses and grades that you had for these colleges. So say I took, doo -doo -doo, uh, I took English, English 120, and then I would say I got a B, and then the subject area is English. All right. And maybe that semester I also took Spanish, Spanish 120. I would come down here. Now for any of the language classes, um, the first year language classes, the first level of language class, you are going to always put year two language. All right, that's super, super important um, that you put year two language because it is considered a year two language since it's a college course. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and put what language it was. So this one was Spanish. Okay, save and continue. Um, there's two courses I believe that 
don't appear on that drop down menu, which are AOJ 206 and I think it's business 195. In that case, you are able to um, go ahead and click that bottom box that says, I do not see my courses here and add those. Um, if you are looking at your gross font transcript and you see that you have a two unit class, say like your guitar music class, then you would not add that. There's a reason that it's not on here. It's because it's only a two unit class. All right. So now say I'm taking econ senior year. I'll add that. And that's why it's super important to have your transcript on you. Econ uh, for the subject area, it's going to be interdisciplinary elective. So we get that question a lot. Um, yeah, that's going to be interdisciplinary elective. As for political science, um, another question we get a lot. So it depends on what political science class you have. So say I'm taking poli 121. All right. That would be civics slash American government. Now say I took poli 124. So that would be actually under um, elective, where is it? Oh, elective history, social science, okay? So it's a little bit different. I know it's kind of confusing, uh, but this one is American history and this one is not. So just be mindful of that. All right. Then you're gonna go back and you're gonna check it all over, make sure it all looks good. And we're gonna check it for you too. And then um, you wanna confirm that you have no other courses to report. Oops, that just kidding, that was me. Um, I said that I took more of those courses and I didn't do it for the sake of time in this video. So just ignore that. And then additional comments. So this is the part where you can add, say your transcript dipped a little bit in one semester or um, you know your grades fell for any reason, or maybe there was a class that you weren't able to take because of a scheduling error, or they weren't offering it that year, so you weren't able to take it. Anything that you were like looking at your transcript and being like, I wish I could explain this portion of my transcript to the colleges. Well, you can, and this is where you're gonna put it. So um, go ahead and you, know, you can do bullet points. You have 550 characters here. Um, so use them wisely if you need help with this. I have a few resources I could give you too. So um, just come by. I'll try to put it in the the, you, the links in um, the description on the YouTube. So look at that. Let's skip this page. Okay. Um, and the last page is where you'll see any errors. So be sure not to like, you know, bypass any errors. Make sure to fix any errors that you have um, before you submit. And now this is just a time where you're going to review your academic history. If you turn in to get checked, which I highly, highly, highly recommend you do, please do, um, then we're gonna hopefully catch those errors for you as well. But we wanna make sure that you're looking first. And then this is where if you have any AP exams to report, you can add them and you'll just go ahead and add them. So they're either gonna be completed or if you're taking an AP course this term or um, you know this term or next term, you can add the when you plan on taking them. Okay. All right. Uh, so then it's going to go on to IB tests. We are not an IB school. Um, so you're going to go ahead and click no. This is where if you've taken any Eng English proficiency tests, um, you can put those down below. The UCs do not accept um, the SAT or the ACT, so no need to report that. This is if you have any international exams to report, so a lot of international students have exams that they need to report here. All right, they're gonna ask you to review your test section. And now it'll get to the activities and awards. So this is where you're going to add any extracurriculars that you've been a part of. Um, there's a lot of categories. So you can add an honor that you've gotten if you're a part of honor roll that could go here. Maybe you won a coach's award and um, your sport that you play, anything like that. Any kind of club, sport, after school activity, volunteer hours. Um, if you have a hobby, right? If you have a hobby that you're really interested in that you wanna add, any work experience. 
Um, there's also things like that I think a lot of students forget to put in here, but like, do you have responsibilities for helping take care of anyone in your home? Um, like if you, it's a family member or if it's a, you know, sibling, um, do you have responsibilities around the house? Like things like that. So it's basically, they're basically asking for context, right? They want to know if you are not doing your schoolwork at the, the hours that you're not in school, what are you doing? Um, so this is a really great opportunity for you to share more about who you are, how you spend your time and what you care about. So you have, um, you know, several slots in here, um, to be able to fill with activities. If you have questions, I would love to answer them. So come by my office. Um, and then I would also recommend you putting bullet points. So let's just, let's just start one, uh, extracurricular activity. So this is where you name the activity. So if I was a part of Scotty Restore, a great club on campus, um, maybe, I, and I'd say I was the, you know, vice president. So I would put vice president. Do you want to put your role? Oh, it's too late for me to know how to spell things. Um, vice president, and then you put this, the, the club name. So I'm going to do Scotty Restore. And then down here, you're, you'll describe um, what you did. So this is where you get to say all of the, the um, ways that you participated, you made an impact in whatever you were a part of. Um, it's okay to put bullet points. I would recommend you use active verbs. So things like organized and ran, you know, weekly meetings, weekly club meetings, facilitated restorative circles. Um, and then just kind of keep outlining like that, that they, all of the ways that you helped um, whatever organization you're a part of or whatever your role was. So instead of saying like, in this club, we did this, this, and this, you wanna say what specifically was your role? What specifically did you do um, and the impact it made? If it's an award, how selective was that award? Did you, were you one out of a hundred people to win this award? Were you one out of 10, right? So these things are really good, um, good things for the UCs to see. And then if you are having trouble coming up with activity ideas, just know you do not have to fill all slot, all of the slots that they provide. Um, it's not, it's not like who has the most. You want to think more about quality, not quantity. All right. It's also going to ask you how many grades did you do this? So if I did this 10th and 11th, I might put that there. You can even say like, I plan on doing this after 12th grade as well. And then it asks you how many hours per week did you spend doing this activity? And then how many weeks per year? So this is an estimate, right? They're not expecting it to be perfect. They're not going to come and audit you and, you know, make you show proof that you're doing it for this many hours for this many weeks, but you want to be as honest as possible. Okay, we're going to skip down to the scholarships and programs. This is basically where you'll get to um, just, you know, name your interests, right? They have scholarships that they want to advertise to you um, that you might qualify for. And these are maybe ways that you can qualify. So make sure you go through these, click any and all that apply to you even a little bit um, so that they can, you know, give you the most amount of opportunity for scholarships as possible. And then if you would like to apply for the EOP program, I highly recommend it. It's for students that are historically underrepresented in the college system. So it's like first gen, low income, um, and they wanna help by providing you with extra support while you're in college. So this is great because um, a lot of times that you can get your classes earlier, you can get um, specific advising that maybe would be harder to get if you're not a part of the program. A lot of times they do, um, you know, community events where it's like all the people in EOP gather together and um, do fun things. So I would really recommend um, applying for that. And then why are you interested? I would just say which one, like which of these, um, or if you want to do a little bit more research on it, but like what would help you um, the most in your college experience and why I'd say is like a good, a good start for this question. All right. And now we go to the super exciting, everyone's favorite topic, the personal insight questions, yay. Um, so these are not essays, right? These are questions, they're short answer questions. You only have 350 words. 
I recommend you pause this video, you open up a Google document and you start typing it out there instead of in um, this, these boxes um, because it can quit out on you and you can lose all of your PIQ and that's not fun. Nobody likes that. So um, choose four out of eight prompts. I sent you all slides in your email um, from the PIQ workshop that we did in case you missed it. So I would go there. There's tips for every single one of these questions on that those slides. So go ahead and take a look at that. If you have any other questions, I would love to help. Um, I love, love PIQs. I know that they're not always fun to do, but it's a great way to show colleges who you are, get them to see um, you as, you know, a whole person and not just a transcript, right? So it's a really great opportunity and one that I would not recommend wasting. All right. And here's where you might put any special circumstances um, that you didn't have an opportunity to put anywhere else in the, in the application. Okay. So now it is time to review and submit, right? So I did not finish this full uh, application, so it's gonna kind of put that error on there. You wanna finish your full application, and then you wanna go here to print version. It's gonna pop up to ask you to print it, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open a new tab. You're gonna go to helixcharter.net. You can go to either your grade level team's um, website, or you can go to the college and career website by going to student support, college and career website, and then it should pop up with a thing that says application review Google form, get your college application checked. Super important. Um, we really, really, really want to check your college application. You get the really cool button that allows you to get into the I've applied party, um, which is happening in December. So if anything, do it for the button, do it for the party, do it for the hot cocoa. Um, but really do it because we have never seen a perfect application and sometimes your errors might cause um, you to not get accepted when you are fully qualified. So we want you to have the best chance possible. Go ahead and fill this all out, upload your application that you just downloaded, and then submit it. We are not gonna look really at your activities or your PIQs. If you want feedback for that, come to the College and Career Center. 